Something which makes camera special to me is the potential to capture a moment in time that will never happen again. To accurately translate that moment into an image or video file, we need to understand how the camera works. To see anything we need light, and the most common source of this is of course the sun. Our eyes can detect visible light, which is a mixture of all the different colours, and we can call this white light. Because sunlight is the primary source of light that we have been exposed to in our lifetime, we expect colours of objects to look a certain way. Things like greens in a leaf, or different skin tones. So sunlight is like a reference point for how we expect colours to look. When we use artificial light, the quality of the light is often scored on how close it matches with the sun. This is why a lot of cheaper lights have a weird look to them. They might make skin tones look green or purple, because it does not match with what we expect to see. Thinking about how cameras work, light is essentially the foundation to anything we are trying to capture. We need a quality light source if we want to capture colours which appear natural and realistic. Now that we understand a bit more about light, the next step is to catch it. To do this we use a lens. The main purpose of the lens is to gather light and we can control the field of view and the amount of light that we allow to pass through the lens. We control the field of view by choosing a focal length. For a wide field of view we use a low focal length and for a narrow field of view we use a high focal length. We usually state focal length in millimetres. As you can see from these shots going from 18 millimetres up to 35, 50 and 100, the field of view starts wide and is getting more narrow as the focal length increases. Something else is also happening. The distance between the objects appear to be changing. So at the wide focal lengths, objects appear to be further apart, and at a longer focal length, things appear to be closer together. This is often described as lens compression, and this is a product of the distance between the camera, subject, and the background. As the focal length increases, the distance between objects appears smaller, and the opposite effect for decreasing focal length. You can use this to your advantage to make a distant object look large, or you can make your subject big and your background small. To control the amount of light passing through the lens, we use the aperture. This is like a circle which is adjustable. We can make the circle big to allow more light through, and that would be a low f-stop. We can make it small to allow less light to pass through a high f-stop. There's also something else happening as we open up the aperture. The depth of field is more narrow, and as we close it down, the depth of field increases. So with our lens, we can control the field of view and the depth of field. So if we take off this lens and look behind it, that thing you see behind it, that's a sensor. To make this a bit easier to visualize, you can think of the sensor as a rectangular grid with buckets that can capture light. To be more specific, that grid is actually a pixel array, which contains red, green and blue pixels. Each pixel can only capture red, green or blue light. The number of pixels will give you the resolution of the sensor. So, a 12 megapixel sensor will have 12 million pixels on the sensor. So you might be wondering, if these pixels can only record red, green and blue, then how do we record all the other colours? Well, let's see. When a pixel detects light, the brightness is measured across a range of values. We can think of this in terms of percentage. 0% would mean no light on that pixel, and then 100% would be as much light as that pixel can contain. The full brightness that that pixel can record, light below 0 or above 100%, cannot be recorded by the sensor. The number of steps between 0 to 100% on the sensor is usually given in terms of bit depth, so that's 2 to the power of something. If it's 2 to the power of 12, then we have 12 bit, which means 4096 steps between 0 to 100%. Most modern sensors will capture between 12 and 16 bit. Okay, now we understand what's on the sensor, but I still haven't explained how we can get more colours than red, green or blue. To do that, we need to look at the Bayer filter. And this is a filter which is used on most sensors, on modern cameras, and it allows us to get the full colour spectrum. The pixel array on its own only detects brightness of light, not colour. For colour, the Bayer filter goes on top of the pixel array, 
and filters white light down to red, green and blue. Looking at this diagram, we have two greens, one red and one blue, in a repeating pattern across the whole sensor. There's two greens because our eyes are most sensitive to green, so it will closer match what we see when we collect more of that light. And finally, we're ready to make colours other than red, green and blue. This takes place in the processor. So we've got a sensor with a Bayer filter on top of it. Now we need to use a special sequence of steps to get the colours. These instructions look at the neighbouring pixel values and then do some maths to estimate the pixel colour value. The technical term for this is a de Bayer algorithm. Because this de Bayer algorithm is estimating the pixel values whenever you capture something, you're never going to resolve the full resolution of the sensor. As the debate algorithm is an estimate of what each pixel actually captures. So for example, a 12 megapixel sensor, which records 4K video, might only resolve slightly more than 1080p video because of the estimation involved. That's why a lot of modern high-end cameras oversample video. Cameras which oversample 6K sensor readout down to a 4K video or an 8K sensor readout down to a 4K video will give far more video resolution compared to a 4K sensor readout to a 4K video file. As oversampling minimizes the approximation errors due to the debate algorithm. Okay, now we have an image signal coming in from our sensor. We need to form an image or video file. So there are two ways we can do this. We can have a raw file or a compressed file. Let's see what this is about. The raw file will preserve all the information from the sensor, so you can have a lot more freedom to make adjustments in post on a computer. One of the drawbacks of a raw file is the large file size. To address this, compressed files are used. They throw away some of the information to save space, generally reducing the freedom to make adjustments in post. To summarize, the foundation of any image is the light. The quality of the light will determine how natural or realistic the colors look as our eyes have adapted to sunlight. The next step is to capture light, and that's done with the lens, and we can adjust the field of view and the depth of field. And the sensor converts that light into a signal, which is then processed into an image or video file. Thanks for watching guys, see you in the next one.